Okay, I think we'll start our Monday, July 15th, 2024, Transportation Advisory Board for the City of Longmont. Let's go ahead and um, do a roll call, please. Chair Lehner. Here. Board Member Bennett. Present. Board Member Wicklund. Here. Vice Chair McKee Burroughs. Here. Board Member McInerney. Here. And Board Member Kim. Great. Well, um, it looks like number three, we don't have our new member here tonight, Alex uh, Kalk Hoffer, I think. Um, Just and I don't know if David and myself need to give anybody an introduction. <laughs> yeah, just but, to be fair, just to be fair to the new member, yeah. um, there was a delay mm -hmm. from the city council. They weren't able to take action on the first time that they were going to do the board appointments. So they had to wait, I believe it was an extra week at least. And so there was a delay. So uh, we'll give Alex the benefit of the doubt and try to keep in touch with him and make sure we uh, get him to next month's meeting. Thanks. Absolutely. And uh, you know, one thing that uh, I just want to make kind of a, I don't want to call it a point in order, but uh, just a courtesy for, for Diane and Phil is when we do get that email with the agenda and the reply of whether you're gonna be here or not. She, you know, it's really nice if Diane knows this before today. So when she sends that, I think she sends it usually on the Friday prior. Um, let her know, that's just a nice courtesy for, for us to know who's gonna be here and that way we have a quorum. And I'm not saying anybody hasn't, it's just kind of just our general operating procedure. Okay, um, let's move on to number four, the uh, election of officers, chair and vice chair. Um, I guess we'll go ahead and take nominations and we can start with the uh, chair. Uh, I would like to nominate Steve Lehner as chair once again. Okay. If you'll so have it. Guess we need a motion. Or uh, I'm sorry, a second. I, I apologize. Seconded. Okay, all those in favor of me being bored, say aye. 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 Any no's? Hey. <laughs> okay. Okay, next for vice. I'd like to um, move that board member Burroughs McKee be vice chair again. Uh, second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. That is out of the way. Uh, we'll go on to number five, designation of places for posting of meetings per state statute. Yeah, typically we will post the meetings. It's more of an online, online posting now, so that's really the place where we try to send people. But there is, uh, technically there has to be a, a posting on a physical Play, in a physical place so we do have right there at the front entrance the west entrance to the civic center is where we will post meetings and i believe the library also so those are the two places we post meetings in uh f physically so just in case we just want to make sure that that's stated for the record great okay we'll move on to um looking at the minutes of the preceding minute a meeting from <clears throat> excuse me june 2024 are there any comments or corrections from those minutes of June? Okay, can I get a motion to approve those minutes? Motion to approve Transportation Advisory Board action minutes from June 10th, 2024. And do I have a second? I second approval. Okay, all those in favor of approving the minutes of the preceding meeting, say aye. 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 Opposed? Nope. Okay, let's move on. Uh, communications from staff. Well, we wanted to call Ben Ortiz down. He's the staff member who really helps put together the whole Bike to Work Day piece, and he has some information, uh, very brief information on uh, how Bike to Work Day went this year and uh, I think that'll be it. Thank you, Phil. Members of the Transportation Advisory Board, my name is Ben Ortiz, I'm a transportation planner. So, 
for those of you who are familiar with the event, it happens the fourth Wednesday in June in Colorado. And so for this year, it took place on uh, June 26th, Wednesday, June 26th. And the city hosted a station here at the Civic Center Plaza and um, uh, that was considered a breakfast station. And the hours were from 7 to 9 a.m. As in years past, the uh, Longmont Lions Club um, griddled pancakes and sausages. And um, we feel we had a, a really good turnout this year, although our sign-in sheet didn't reflect that. Um, I feel like this was one of the best turnouts we've ever had. Um, and what was different this year than in years past was we offered up um, prizes, raffle prizes for people who attended. And uh, that was pretty well received. Um, the reason why I say it was one of the best well-attended events was because we we pretty much ran out of food. And so, and so here in Longmont, there were um, uh, a total of uh, five uh, breakfast stations. Uh, one was uh, Johnston Chiropractic. They're near, located near Hover and Mountain View. And they had a breakfast station from 6.30 to 9 a.m. And then Spice E-Bikes, the Spicy Shop, uh, located uh, at Main Street near Longs Peak. And then Moe's Bagels down here at 2nd and Main. And then the Longmont Economic Development Partnership also hosted a station. So on Bike to Work Day, there are several types of stations you can host. One is the breakfast station. That's the most pop popular. Then water stations, which, you know, people put out water for people on their commutes home. And then party stations. And I have no idea what's involved in that. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> People who like to party. Anyway, the Danish Furniture, they they put together a water station here in Longmont, and that was open from 10.30 to 5.30. And so that's that's pretty much my update. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to take those now. Should we take a show of hands of who participated in Bike to Work Day this year? Okay. <laughs> no. Yes, um... So I got to attend, and I'd like to commend the Lions Club for also having um, like reusable plates, and like they're very eco-friendly with the event. That was amazing. Work. That's all Ben Ortiz. Well, thank you, Ben. He um, washes those. He dries them. He one thing them that I um, I noticed for some of the earliest uh, people is that they weren't able to participate in the raffle because they had to go to work. And so I was wondering if you thought of any way to be more inclusive towards the people that have to get to work early. Yes, board member Bennett. We did talk about that. And this was the first time we've ever done this, and so we're we're learning from our mistakes, and that was one that we we realized really early on. So I think what we're going to try to do for next year, since the event starts typically starts at seven o'clock, is that we'll hold two raffles, one at seven thirty, and then one at eight, and so hopefully that'll be uh, be able to to satisfy that that concern. Hey Ben. Um Couple questions. First off, did you get or were you able to get any feedback from the participants on TMP and happenings in Longmont and that sort of a thing, or was that even a part of this? Uh, we didn't. We didn't put out any boards for the trans transportation mobility plan, unfortunately. Um, yeah, you know what? That was an oversight on my part, and uh, I, in retrospect, honestly, I didn't even think about it. I had. A couple of things going on in June. One was the uh, League of American Bicyclists Bicycle Friendly Cities application, and um, <clears throat> it was uh, a much bigger project than I had anticipated, and so that really took up a lot of my time and my focus on top of the bike to work day planning. But yeah, that that's a good point. Something that, uh, in retrospect, I wish we had done. Well, and that's 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 on us as project managers but we did talk with folks as they came in and did ask those questions that are part pertinent to the tmp we think we got some good information back just generally we also asked some questions about vision zero so i think overall there wasn't official boards but we did get some good information back from participants oh, that's great to hear um and in regards to the raffle um and prizes and that sort of thing were there a, a fair amount of uh, businesses that were able to donate or was it uh i mean was, I'm just curious. I mean, you could have done a, maybe a running raffle every, I was just thinking off the top of my head, every 15 minutes or so. That would have been fun. Yeah, true. That's a good point. 
So we we have a fairly sizable bike to work day fund, and I never go through it entirely. So we use those funds to purchase um, bicycle related, not swag, but actual usable things that people can use for 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 bicycling, like bike locks, for example, and pumps and that kind of thing. Um, and so we we um, solicited local bike shops and purchased items from them. And so next year, um, if we do plan on doing two raffles, well, uh, one, I feel like we didn't buy enough for this year's. But again, that's a learning experience on our part. And, um, and so next year, if we hold two, we'll, we'll be certainly buying at least double that amount. We do have some additional items from staff. We just want to remind you that. Well done, Ben. Yeah. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Good job. Uh, in regards to your question about the TMP, we do have a open house and open house planned for this Thursday, July 18th, 5.30 to 7. We will not have a raffle, but we will have a presentation about 6 o'clock-ish, which is always which is way more fun than raffling. Yeah, free, some free food. We'll have some snacks, so please come. We always enjoy seeing our Transportation Advisory Board members uh, come to those different things. I know it's it's not always convenient, but uh, we do appreciate your time if you can make it. So we will be talking about the Transportation Mobility Plan at that. We are in that second phase of a draft plan, so we're now looking for actual responses to some of the things that we've found through the first round of outreach and some of the data collection. So. Appreciate your time on that. If there are no questions with the transportation mobility plan and just hope you can all attend, we'll, it's at the library. So we'll be at the library to see you there. Um, I will pass it off to Kyle, who has some information for you as well. Yep, so we reached a really good milestone uh, regarding our Travis Signal um, upgrade project. Um, last week we did upgrade our uh, Main Street corridor uh, minus Ken Pratt Boulevard and Main Street um, to our new system. Um, but basically the new system brings in new detection that detects uh, individual objects versus just zones. Um, so we can track uh, speed and direction as well as it can classify pedestrians, bicyclists as well. Um, and there's future um, plans from um, the company, FLIR, to uh, add in more multimodal options such as like scooters or um, other type of mobility devices. Um, we're playing on uh, upgrading State Highway 119 or Ken Pratt Boulevard in the next coming weeks. Um, we have cameras installed. We just need to uh, calibrate those and uh, program controllers and get those intersections up and running. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, board members, um, I wanted, wanted to provide you with a few updates on some of the ongoing construction projects. Jim, I'm sorry. Did you? I can wait till the end or okay. Kyle, are you going to be here for the whole meeting? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, some of the on or the the ongoing construction projects um, that, if uh, as you're moving about town, you'll run into uh, or hear about. Um, Coffin Street has been underway for a few weeks now. Um, they are working from seventh to ninth on the west side. Uh, have the so the southbound direction is closed um, northbound direction is still open um, that project we anticipated to go another 18 to 20 months did I say Long's Peak what did I say Seven. oops Long's Peak the ninth I even wrote Long's Peak <laughs> uh, Spring Gulch number two um, we had anticipated hopefully having that that open by this time, uh, that has been delayed. A contractor, we were having some challenges with the contractor. Uh, some of the work he's been doing um, had to had to be redone, as well as he's not putting enough crews on it. So that's getting pushed out. Um, when we have a, a firmed update for when that trail will be open, we will we will get you that information via email. Um, we are beginning a drainage project on Third Avenue. Um, that is the kind of the ongoing work we've been doing for the last few years involves some traffic improvements that is starting from Sherman Street, just extending a few hundred feet 
uh, to um, what's the next street over? Not Vivian. Francis. To Francis, sorry about that. Uh, it's a short, short run up, but we all are have included some water line work in that as well. Um, it's critical in that we need to get that work done so we can finish the repaving project, so that we can finish the striping. Um, we've heard a lot of have have heard a lot about not having some of the the stop bars in, so we didn't want to. We don't like putting down paint that's going to get torn up in a, in very near future. Uh, we've been delayed by uh, a gas line relocation, but that work will will start. Should go pretty quick before a fall hits. Hopefully, we'll have that that whole project completed. Uh, Boston Avenue Bridge continues its work. Uh, it's about sixty percent currently. They do anticipate a tentative um, completion for October November this year. Um, that's for the bridge and hopefully the trail. Um, we are looking that um, we're going to be start uh, with staff to look at um, the detour uh, that when the Boston Bridge is complete, the Army Corps project will be following later in the year, but the trail to Boston should be complete. We're then looking at revising that detour, shortening it up, running it down Boston, but staff's going to be meeting on that later in August uh, and having a, a reformulated plan for that. Um, if you are downtown area, um, you will see some work going on. Um, the Longmont Hotel uh, is uh, under construction across the street. Um, at the same time, we're also working on the Safety and Justice Building. Um, and there are two drainage projects in the alleys on the 400 block north uh, between Maine and Kimbark, and then on the west side between Maine and Kaufman on, this, on the 300 block. Uh, those will be those two drainage projects will be short only a few weeks uh, So they'll be in and out hotel will be going on for about 18 more months um, and I note that because um, As you will you know getting here and getting out during peak hours parking is is at a minimum so plan accordingly um, some of the other work we're doing, some of our, our operations team is working on um, some of the, the crack seal projects they've got. Uh, we're working on Renaissance this week. Um, they've got their new uh, equipment, and so we'll be, be working on those. Um, and then they'll be moving into the projects that they uh, missed from last year in some of the northeast areas of the city. Uh, our asphalt rehab, uh, chip seal is completed. Uh, we worked on Airport Road this year and then 9th Avenue. Um, and then uh, an asphalt rehab, we redid Fordham. Um, we redid uh, Long's Peak, yeah, there you go. Um, but I, I wanted to point out Fordham because that was um, through some, some uh, creative striping. We took that from a three lane and did a road diet on that one section down to two lanes and then put in some buffered bike lanes in that road. Uh, and that's some of the, the small Kind of each year we do asphalt rehab. We look at that um, in the fall for the next year's work. Um, and that was it on updates. Any feedback on the road diet? Nothing bad. <laughs> no complaints. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, the Boston Bridge detour, are you talking about bikes? Is that what, in terms of when the bridge is done and then Army Corps is going to start? Right? Yeah, the, okay. the bike detour runs okay. up around um, yeah. along the railroad tracks. We're going to be looking at having that detour changed, okay. hopefully to have it run down Boston okay. and then catch back up uh, to sunset and back on the trail. Okay. So, and then, and then uh, is there an expected start time of when the Army Corps will kind of begin their process of we are still finalizing the property acquisition okay um we should be closing that out but i think they're going to be going to bid shortly and then hopefully we're i think we're looking at an october time frame okay and then it's probably a, a year two year yeah i think it's 12 months to 18 months is their okay. schedule okay cool thank you and then uh the only question i have for for kyle for the traffic sig signals, I know the last meeting you talked about maybe giving a presentation about how they work. Uh, is that still kind of in a plan, hopefully, in the we're future? We're scheduled for September for that one. Okay, cool. Thank, Thank you. you.
This is a question for Jim. Um, is First Avenue by chance on your crack seal project list? Because those cracks are getting pretty big now. Whereabouts on First Avenue? Um, just off uh, South Martin, between South Martin and Maine. It's some of those cracks. So are. between South Martin and Maine, I believe, is a um, concrete roadway. Mm -hmm. So we don't, our, our crack seal is, is specifically designed for asphalt roadways. Um, but in this year's budget, we have money to start working on our concrete roadways for looking at the basically a study for them. And we have money, money budgeted in future years for those repairs. But I can see what our, our uh, operations staff um, will take a look at and see if there's any short-term repairs they can do. Okay, yeah, because some of those cracks are like a good couple inches mm -hmm. wide at this point. That's your report from staff. Okay. Um, we will move to public comments. And it looks like we've got Dan Wolford here. Board chair and board members, my name is Dan Wolford. I live at 1815. Third Avenue in Longmont. And I just want to say I greatly appreciate you taking the time to consider uh, new business tonight about the open space permanent extension. Um, I'm here as you get into the discussion and happy to address any questions you might have related to that. Again, I greatly appreciate your efforts and taking uh, the consideration into staff's recommendation. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, information items. Phil, do we have anything? Nothing more to report, thank you. Okay, so we'll move to the action items, which was uh, the Save Our Space uh, ballot position recommendation to the City of Longmont. We had uh, said at the last meeting a suggested motion to recommend to City Council that they support the permanent extension of the open space tax uh, for the November 2024 ballot. Um, I mean, I'll just, kind of open it up and um, hit the button and we can get your comments or any questions for uh, Mr. Wolford that's here um, and for staff. How's that? What do you want to do? Yes, uh, after looking after over the information, um, I, it seems like a pretty straightforward solution and uh, of the, and that a, a valuable resource that uh, I would like to see continue on. Um, so at this time, I don't have any questions. Um, yeah, Mr. Wolford, I'm, I'm pretty much all in support, you know, as you know my history a little bit. Uh, but also, uh, I do have one kind of just curious question because it says the open open space sales tax is to sunset in 2034. Uh, so why a kind of a 10 year jump start to it? Board members, relatively simple from the perspective is that this year is a national election mm -hmm. and we get much greater attendance and participation from that perspective. That's why we chose this year with the hopes that if for some reason it didn't fail, that we can make modifications and go come back in four years. The other aspect of that, too, is it gives the natural resources staff plenty of time to do long-range planning and look, looking at capital projects and how they can participate in the city's CIP, knowing that they have a revenue stream sooner than later. That all makes sense. Thank you. I'm just curious, uh, what are the your long term projects? Do you like maybe you had some ideas about what you would do long term, like in maybe 10 years or so? That's a great question. From a long term perspective, speaking with natural resources staff and other city staff members, 
There's a variety of projects. They currently have at least five acquisitions that they're currently working on. Some of those as far out east um, as, um, what is it, uh, County, Lo County Road 5 and 66, all the way to Button Rock. Additionally, there's uh, a number of things like in-stream flow factors where the open space <clears throat> Funding could work with water uh, water boards and, and water uh, resources staff for acquisition of water rights to put those um, water rights into the st into uh, stream flows to uh, enhance um, the diversity of our riparian corridors as well as uh, you know a, a wide variety of capital projects. Um, like connections of the St. Frank Greenway to St. Frank State Park, as well as, you know, the great trail that's intended to head out to Lyons on, on the west side. You know, there's trail connections we'd like to see from Lake McIntosh to the St. Frank, to the St. Frank Greenway via Westview Middle School. That would be something that could be done. And I know that um, the city is currently in negotiations and part of the trail planning team with Weld County to make yet another trail connection from Union Reservoir to St. Frank State Park and into the Colorado Front Range Trail. Those are just a wide variety of projects that are out there. Mr. Wolford, thank you very much for taking the time to appear before our board twice. Um, are you still the land program administrator for open space? No, sir, I'm not. I retired in um, October of 22. I see. So um, as a retiree, I feel it's my role to foster programs that I appreciate, you know, as well as I'm a water board advisory member for the city of Longmont. Well, thank you for your service. Um, <clears throat> I believe that open space has a great value to the community and that it's a good investment. But I have some questions about this particular uh, ballot proposal. Did your group consider asking the voters for a tax rate increase now and then returning to the voters in a subsequent November closer to the 2034 sunset date? to seek to make the tax permanent. In other words, bump the rate up first, then make it permanent. Board members, we did consider that. Again, you saw what happened to the three recreation issues that were um, you know, in last year's ballot election. And I think with property taxes being what they were, um, again, looking at other issues that are in front of the general public in November of 2024, we decided it probably wasn't in the best interest of the public. I see. Does your group's <coughs> ballot proposal for this November include additional bonding authority for open space acquisition? No, sir. At this point in time, it does not. Okay. I know that the city ordinance that was adopted in the year 2000, which is when the tax was first approved by the voters, authorized $22 million in additional debt with a repayment cost of $40.5 million to acquire, improve, and maintain open space. Now, did the 2007 voter approval to extend the tax also include additional bonding authority? Board members, the 2007 extension was just that, an extension. It didn't inc include additional bonding. Okay. So the, just, just as a point of fact, um, in the open space acquisition, the first seven years, through acquisitions and park and, park and trail development, we blew through that 20 plus million or billion million million dollars and so that was the need for the extension to be able to continue the operations of the open space program okay so how much open space debt does the city have now to be quite honest with you i can't tell you that okay so 
do you know what percentage of the open space program's budget is taken up by debt service? I believe it's a, approximately a third of our operational costs. And in your opinion, you know a lot about this, at what percentage would debt service constrain the ability of the open space program to maintain the open space we already have? Considering the, a variety of factors, obviously uh, growth and, and development of additional properties, um, the natural resources group and, and team does a lot more than just manage open space properties. They're also responsible for the management of uh, the city's wildlife management program, a wide variety of things. So from that perspective, uh, I think it's calculated in the operations and the cash flow that we would cover all those operational issues for the existing um, you know, sales tax. There, are, there is a small pool, relatively small pool. And again, when I say relatively small, $3 million sitting for acquisition opportunities as they arise, but that's it. And as I mentioned earlier, they're currently reviewing and looking at five properties of which could be anywhere, you know, between that 10 and $15 million for acquisition. Okay, so with those five acquisition projects, would that require um, getting more bonding authority? At this point in time, it would not. So how would how would that be paid for? They would pay for it over time as the annual cash flow comes in. Part of that will be negotiations of partial payments maybe on some of those. Oh, I see. At, at this point in time, I'm not privy to the individual negotiations with each of those landowners. Right, right. But in, in, in past, we have have worked with like Boulder County to make the, to have that ability to purchase that property up front today but over time, then we're paying back Boulder County um, for an acquisition. That's just one example of those possibilities. I see. So it wouldn't necessarily require more bonds Bonding. being floated. No. And again, I think should there be a need for additional bonding, that would come to city council for, for uh, a vote of the public. Mm -hmm. Is there ongoing oil and gas development and gravel mining on... Longmont open space lands? There currently are, um, as I recall, there are no oil and gas operations within the annex portions of the city. Jim, am, am I correct from that perspective? Yeah, I don't believe there's any in oil and gas operations going on within, within the city of Longmont, those annex portions. However, the other aspect, the gravel mining operation, um, I'm quite certain that you're familiar with the Costco uh, deal and the ongoing operations part of that, the Costco. Um, part of that property is owned by the Golden family. Um, and as a condition of, of purchase acquisition of open space um, on the Golden Farms property was a condition of further gravel mining that property. Um, that property currently has a, a significant section of the St. Vrain Greenway going through that property. Currently, they're on the south side of 119. At some point in time, they will come f and gravel mine uh, two cells, I believe, on the north side of 119 across from Costco. The nice aspect of that is, is then the city of Longmont has the ability to direct the reclamation process of what they what they would like to see in that whether it's wetland development um, you know a smaller pond for maybe water rights to hold that or again restoration uh, of short grass prairie a wide variety of options currently that property is under an agricultural lease till 2034. <laughs> So does the open space program get some revenue from the gravel mining? No, that was all part of the negotiations back in, I believe that we purchased that property back in 2005. However, 
the open space program is getting a small uh, revenue stream from oil and gas that's currently being, if you will, mined under open space. Currently, there are no um, wells or, uh, yeah, I guess wells in the city, but there are collecting lines underneath the city. And whether it's water resources or um, open space or sanitation, they are co collecting a revenue, a royalty revenue from oil and gas. Mm -hmm. Are there any other revenue sources besides the uh, sales and use tax? We do generate the, I, I keep saying we, I'm no longer a part of that <laughs> we. Um, they do generate um, nearly $100,000 a year from agricultural leases. Um, we've got a variety of agricultural properties, a lot of them um, in and around Union Reservoir that generate uh, a vicinity of $100,000 a year. Uh, do you have a draft ballot measure text to share with us? Board members, I wish I did. I've not seen that yet. It's in the hands of the natural resources staff and the city attorneys. Um, and I believe they will be presenting some of that language to council in, um, I believe it's the 23rd of July. Okay. Um, this isn't strictly about funding, but I'm wondering if Longmont continues to urbanize, can open space that was initially classified as a nature area to be used only for low impact recreation, can that later be developed for higher impact use and become a neighborhood park or a community park? Or is that forbidden by that ordinance that was passed in the year 2000? The open space sales, the ordinance allows open space dollars to be used to make improvements to originally was district parks. Through the process, we've changed the name of those to nature areas. Example would be Golden Ponds, Jim Ham, um, the southern portion of Sandstone Ranch. All of those, for those to be changed for what other additional development outside of park or a nature area would require a vote of the public. Um, finally, the the. 2018 Longmont Open Space Master Plan update refers to a shift in focus from acquisition to management. C can you comment on that? Is that something that's happening? Certainly, board members. It's like I would say anything else, anything new, as you could certainly understand. Let's say your home as you move into your home. First thing you're going to do is pay to buy, you know, to buy that beautiful home. And then over time, you're going to make improvements. We've shifted, and again, we are relatively young. Here I'm saying it again, we, this we <laughs> thing. The city's program is relatively young, moving into, you know, 20, 25 years versus the city of Boulder, who's had since the turn of the last century. So as acquisitions become smaller or less in, in number, you're really wanting to manage those areas. So whether it's for wildlife or it's putting money into multimodal development of trail systems to get people around and to appreciate the outdoors, there's a variety of things. So that natural transition is to reduce your acquisitions and move into enhancements and management of those properties. Thanks very much. I have nothing further. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so I don't have a, as many questions as board member McInerney. <laughs> I actually just want to comment that I really like the pamphlets and the slogan. SOS really like catchy, smart, gets people's attention. And on one of my trail walks, I saw some turkeys. Mm -hmm. I was like, I didn't know turkeys came up here. <laughs> That's all. Thank you for the uh, history lesson, as, as well as the, the other information. We appreciate your time.
Are there any other comments from the board before we move to uh, passing a motion? I just want to make sure that we've covered all of our bases here. If not, Taylor, go ahead. Uh, then I will so for move tab to recommend to city council that we support the open space, the ex permanent open space sales tax. Yeah. And I second that. Okay. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. It passes. Um, I'm glad the bike to work day was a success. Um, I've personally been work from home since 2019. So if you ever want to mail me some pancakes, that'd be great. Thank you. Uh, my only comment is two fellow board members, but unfortunately I will not be here next month. So I will be out of the country. So enjoy, enjoy the conversations without me. <laughs> I read online about a bicycle vehicle collision that occurred. I believe it was on June 26th. Can anyone on staff um, tell us more about that and what might be learned from it? Uh, are you aware of, do you know what intersection by chance? The the police report in the Times call for that day, for the 27th, uh, reported um, response to an injury collision at, I think it was uh, 9th and Main, perhaps. But it didn't say that a bicycle was involved, so I'm not sure if that's the one. That's the only reference I could find looking in the Times call. Anybody else hear about uh, such a collision? No. I heard about one on next, <coughs> excuse me, on next door, but it was never. There was never any supporting data of what happened, or it was just a report on next door, mm -hmm. and so without data, we didn't we didn't know what to how to follow up. But I'll certainly look into it. We'll look into it and get you more information. All right. Well, it would show up on the annual crash report eventually. Yeah, we'll we'll we can pull get with PD and, and public safety pull the accident reports for that day. Um, see what we can find. Uh, certainly, be able to report on something by the next meeting, if that's acceptable. Yeah, I think it was the June twenty sixth or June twenty seventh. Okay. Yes. Um, so I um, my only comment is um, I am curious to know I. I Remember that we were supposed to uh, talk, have updates on Vision Zero, and just wondering when that will be. Um, board Member Bennett, uh, just to let you know, we are bringing that back next month. We did get delayed a little bit. We wanted to go to our senior staff and get some direction first from them, and that got delayed because of budget discussions. So we are uh, kind of working behind. It's nothing. Uh, nothing to say anything about what we're trying to do as staff, but it's just trying to say that we're all together as a team uh, falling a little bit behind on that. We'll get it to you next month. We're also going to bring it to city council in. We've now delayed that. I was going to go in because of this meeting. We were going to go to city council in August, early August. With everything being pushed back, we're going to go back to them in September. So um, we are getting delayed a little bit, but that's not to say we're not working on it. Great. Also, congratulations on your second term, Chair Lehner and Board Member McInerney. Uh, Phil, do you have any micro transit updates for us? Unfortunately, we're going to have to wait for those for next month as well because I do not have an active contract yet. I will have it in like two days and I'll be able to say the name loud and proud, but uh, right now I cannot say anything more. But I, I will say this. Um, we've given, and 
again, this might be an issue, but we've given them a bit more time to get their act together and make sure that everything's done correctly because we don't want an opening day or an opening event to be pushed too quickly. So we are pushing it back till middle of September for the launch date. I will say that. Um, I actually have some comments about the Lobo Trail plan. Um, I was looking through it and I don't know if this is informative right now, but um, I had some questions and maybe you might be able to answer them, perhaps. Um, uh, Tom Street and I have been the per people kind of walking through that project with all the CDOT folks and the Boulder County folks who are running that project, but we'd be happy to take any comments you have back to them if... if uh, you have a critical issue that needs to be changed because they are at the 90% planning level. Okay. Um, so looking at like the actual plan, and it looks like in some places it's pretty clear about um, how a crossing will be when there's a road trail interaction. But there's a couple that aren't clear whether it's going to be, for example, a raised crosswalk or if it's going to be an underpass. And that's at Monarch, Oxford, and Fordham. Like those three, it just has the trail and the road, and there's no, it's not clear how that interaction is actually going to play out. I believe that's listed on the CDOT's website and the Boulder County website as being at grade crossings, so those will all be at grade. Uh, there is the possibility that they'll have the raised crosswalk in the middle so that they will at least uh, get cars to slow down if the, if the crossing is longer for cars to be able to get some speed. So. They will be at, all those, all three of those are planned to be at grade. Okay, so is it going to be like those flashing signals to indicate that it's a crossing? Or is it just going to be like strips on the road? They've been talking about kind of a combination of being able to try to put together if it's going to be a rapid flashing beacon, like you see on Main Street. Mm -hmm. But that requires then that you pull over and push, push something correct. So uh, they've been talking about how they can make that as clear as possible that people are crossing and, and make sure motorists know. So I don't have an exact answer for you right now, but again, it's it's very interesting to watch this process move forward because they're basically doing design build. And so they are ready to get out there and start to see what they can do in the field. So that'll be happening very soon at the by the end of this year, at least, or before. Okay. Well, if you had any input, I would always say having like at least a raised crosswalk at least. At least raise crosswalk, and then you also would like to see the flashing signals. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I just can imagine that have a bicyclist going, and most of the way they can just go straight through without having to stop. But I can just imagine that that would be a, a possible collision, even though um, those roads are not as heavily used. But still, it's always possible, especially since it's 119 and it's a fast road. Um. Yeah, and I'm excited to see so many underpasses, so that's going to be really nice and quick to go through when it comes into play. Um, my other question I'm wondering, um, with the TMP, is that um, the draft, is that out publicly yet, or is that something you're going to be presenting to us at some future TAB meeting? Actually, on July 18th, that, will be, that report will be released, and then we will release it uh, virtually as well, so there'll be a there'll be an online presence for that. So at the same time that our open house starts, they'll be releasing that, that draft for review and then we'll give it a month for review time. Okay. Is there going to be like a formal presentation to tab in next month? Yes. Okay. We'll have a formal presentation to TAB regarding the, the, the TMP as well as, uh, as part of that. And this has been requested by our city managers that we put that together with the vision zero piece so you'll kind of have the TMP starting things off, and we'll show how that integrates with the Vision Zero and what, and the, give the update on that as well. Okay, thank you. And um, this is unrelated to everything so far, but um, I just ha I just made all these notes about transportation this month. Um, I don't know how I figured this out, but e-bikes going on buses uh, have a maximum weight of fifty-five pounds, which seems pretty low for an e-bike because a lot of e-bikes are pretty heavy with the batteries and I don't know it's just a comment that that is a restriction on being e-bikes being more and more popular and people wanting to go on buses more with their e-bikes and that's a 
big restriction if you have a heavier bike, especially if you're a bigger bike. person yeah. or a cargo bike like my own. But even just two wheels, like my husband's bike would be too heavy for that because his is like 70 pounds, so he wouldn't be able to use a bus. Right. The only thing I can think of when I think of RTD and, and their idea about putting bike racks on buses is that they would likely limit then the number of bikes. If they had to accommodate e-bicycles, they would probably restrict the number of bikes that could go on a rack. So it would probably be one rather than two. So uh, those are the things we kind of give and take with them. I will say, though, as part of the microtransit program, we are buying up bike racks for the microtransit. So there will be bike racks, and we should probably think about the, the ability to put the e-bikes on those as well. Yeah, especially trikes. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> just you need to have a trailer on the back <laughs> okay thank you okay um i've got a couple things my apologies board member mckee burrows not burrows yeah. mckee because i oh, i mix those um and thank thank you everybody for um having the confidence i can run this back another uh term here um, I appreciate also board member McInerney's questions um, with the uh, SOS in the open space. I, I appreciate that uh, almost historical lesson on all that. That was very good. And Phil, I had a question for you on the Commuting Solutions, the 8th uh, Annual Sustainable Transportation Summit that's coming up on the 27th in August. Right. Um, can we do the early bird ourselves? Does the city help us with that? I can't remember if we did that last year or not. Yeah, why don't you let us know and we will purchase those for you, for the board, if you, you want sure. to go to that. Okay. That? Yep. Um, can you go ahead and send that email from Commuting Solutions to the yes. board? Yeah. <laughs> I will do that, yes. We'll make sure that you're on that. We also have some free ones, so oh, just to give you a heads up, well, because we are sponsored, gold sponsors. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so we do have some free ones, so that's why I'm so confident with my ability to offer those to anybody on the TAB who would like to go. So just uh, 27th. Yeah. Great. 28th, right? Um, I have uh, 827. So. Yes, correct. Sorry. Okay. I'm leaving the 28th. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great. That's all I have. I'm just leaving for a vacation. <laughs> Let's go to uh, 13, and it looks like we covered some of that. So the items for the upcoming agenda, which would be August 12th, which board member Wickland will be in Scandinavia, I take it? Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, sounds like fun. Uh, Vision Zero and TMP updates. Is there anything else substantial from for that meeting? I think that will probably be plenty. Yeah, we actually have some more. Um, this meeting being so light, and I think we've kind of tried to justify you being here and you know, the commute time, I always think that the commute time, we should take all of that and then make at least the meeting be that long to, to, <laughs> for the best of your time. But anyway, next next week, next month will be a different story. Uh, and we'll, we have the CIP that needs to come to you. Mm -hmm. So we have the capital improvement program. Uh, Jim will be helping with that and we'll be presenting. We need to make that, make sure we get a recommendation from you going to city council on that. Mm -hmm. So that'll be an action item. We will bring back micro transit. I don't know how long that needs to be, but it will be. We'll certainly give as many details as we possibly can about the contract and what's what's in there and what that means. But the vendor's been selected, so it's not as if right nothing's going to change. And I've told you about the bike racks. Yeah. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about. We are planning service to extend out to I twenty five and one nineteen. Oh. So we will cover that mobility hub as it opens up this okay. fall. So that's exciting news. At least for Longmont residents, so we'll, we'll have that, we'll have that programmed into that contract as well, and then the TMP and the Vision Zero piece kind of combo platter on that one a little bit. We wanted to do them separate, but we, I think it'll be great to show you how those mesh together. Great. <laughs> okay, um, so we've covered our items for the upcoming agenda. All I need is a uh, move for an adjournment. Motion to adjourn tonight's meeting. Uh, second. All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? Great. That's it.